So this is a message for anybody who's building AI systems in 2025. So I understand that human beings have a natural tendency to create things and that this creativity extends back tens of thousands of years and that you as a tool builder continue this ancient tradition. And I actually respect that a lot. And I offer you a lot of respect for the hard work and passion you've put into building those skills. I also understand that as we as a society create new tools, the world shifts because new tools will unlock new affordances or capabilities we previously didn't imagine that were possible. I also understand, though, that this process doesn't fundamentally make us happy. We continue to build tools and our generation has more technology than any other in human history. And yet we continue to suffer from deep anxiety, stress, burnout, war, and actually increasingly a crisis of meaninglessness. And it seems unlikely that any tool will ever solve that problem. And in fact, it actually often seems that the technology in our society contributes to a epidemic of surveillance, propaganda, disassociation, and political polarization. Furthermore, our technology doesn't fundamentally make our lives easier from an economic standpoint. Rather, what most technology actually does is make our lives faster. So technology is an accelerant, not a relaxant. And that's because whenever some new affordance is unlocked, we're all pushed into weaponizing it within the competitive landscape of modern capitalism. Basically, the new tool becomes the new thing that all of us now require to continue surviving in a now intensified market struggle against others. Long gone are the days when the internet was some fun novelty that we could all choose to use or not. We don't experience childlike joy each morning when we see it up and running, but we certainly panic if it's down. And that's because the internet has sunk into the foundations of our life as infrastructure, without which we're basically disabled. It doesn't guarantee security or in itself make any of us joyful or empowered. Having the internet or electricity or your smartphone or whatever simply means that each of us gets to fight another day and gets to not be left behind by all the others trying to claw their way to some sense of illusory security in an ever changing market. So basically, all our technology doesn't actually make us collectively thrive, relax, and live in abundance. And if that actually were the case, we'd be the most peaceful and chilled out generation in history without poverty or stress. But we all know that that's not the case. Of course, big mega firms do like to spin utopian rosy tales about the new tools and technology they sell. They say that each new round of technology brings us closer to some kind of utopia. You know, remember what they said about the internet in the 1990s? It was supposed to be some giant popular uprising against the feudal lords of big business. You know, a place where we could all collectively make a peer-to-peer -peer global village. That story nowadays sounds incredibly quaint and outdated because what we've really ended up with is an inescapable complex of colossal big tech firms with this revolving door between these inhumanly rich founders and this self-congratulatory class of venture capitalists. These players are now all fusing with the giants of big finance, all those investment banks, private equity firms, and mega funds. And this conglomeration of big tech and big finance is actually looked upon with deep suspicion by the majority of the world's population. But within their own bubble, those big tech firms see themselves as a kind of inspiring class of doers who take the world forward, whether it wants to go or not. Now, many within the tech sector live under this mythology that says that their actions will liberate the world from toil through automation. But not only is this an illusion, but big tech models are actively extractive towards humanity. You know, several years ago, there were these lively debates about the dangers of surveillance capitalism, the fact that these firms are creating these honeypots to get people to hand over their data. But now, in the all-out arms race to AI, those concerns are being pushed aside. The firms have basically hoarded data on thousands of years of human creativity in the form of art, writing, film, invention, music, strategy, and so on. And they've handed it over to the software engineering class to use as raw material to build new AIs that will actually often displace the creators of the original raw material. And that's where you come in. Now, I don't doubt for a moment that working in an AI division right now is an exciting, exhilarating role. In fact, it's probably like being an investment banker in the 1980s, in those kind of go-go years, where there's this wide set of creative possibilities before yourself to create these new and exotic products within a heady, dynamic atmosphere. Perhaps you have strong connections with your colleagues and you feel that your skills are valued, you feel seen, you love going for drinks after work to talk about the latest NVIDIA gossip, you're all in the same boat working for these firms that are encouraging you to think of yourselves as these heroic agents leading humanity on some great adventure. Maybe you think that you're helping us all to get to the next level in the great game of human history. Now, in this, I'm actually happy for you. 
Everyone has gifts in this world, which are meaningful to them and which they can use to form their identity and to express their creativity. And you as a tool builder are working with your gifts and nobody can blame you for that. But I just want you to be aware that in the context of our current world, your gifts will be weaponized and you have a moral responsibility to not be naive about your own position in that great game of human history. If you're an AI engineer right now, people like Mark Zuckerberg, Sam Altman, Larry Ellison, etc. will want you to think that you're part of some great tradition of unstoppable creative destruction, like those periodic wildfires that burn down a landscape to allow for new growth. Zook wants you to move fast and break things. But in the end, the fundamental purpose of AI is to serve the needs of capitalism in three basic ways. Firstly, to give bosses and shareholders new automation technology that can be used to weaken the political power of their workforces by making labor increasingly redundant. Secondly, to give military generals new capabilities to fight and secure territory for further commodification. Thirdly, to help numb out the population with streaming entertainment media like AI-generated cat reels. Now, the prime tendency of our economic system is growth and acceleration. And within the mainstream, innovation is only allowed insofar as it furthers those primary goals. Put differently, if your innovation goes against growth and acceleration, it'll be filtered out or choked through lack of funding, which means it won't get expressed. In short, you get to be creative, but only if you push your creativity into serving the interests of the billionaire class. Now, this is not a judgment of anybody who works in the tech sector. I understand that all of us are pushed towards selling ourselves within this competitive system that we live in. And a person entering the job market in 2025 must play the AI game to survive because they see everyone else doing it. I also understand that you want to feel positive about what you're doing when you do this. But I'd like you to not fall into the trap of those people who pioneered the internet. They were full of optimism, but later they cried tears at the fact that the internet's now used for massive surveillance, data extraction, and centralization of power. So many of them are now very wealthy from those very processes, but they still tell these stories about how they naively hoped that somehow the tech wouldn't be enlisted to enrich small groups of elites while empowering increasingly authoritarian regimes. Those people were, in the 1990s, in the same situation that you find yourself in now. You're having fun developing AI, and you're probably getting very rich off it, and you want to tell yourself and others some feel-good story about this. Here's a request. Please don't. Please don't spin those fairy tales about the wondrous things that AI will do in future. Rather, it'd be really refreshing if you just start from the assumption that by far the most likely outcome is for the tech to be used for massive enrichment and centralization of power in an even smaller elite than before, with even more terrifying mechanisms of control at their disposal. We don't want to see you in some future Netflix documentary talking about how the promise of AI was betrayed, you know, blah, blah. If you don't start with the unrealistic perspective, you won't be disillusioned when the obvious thing happens. Now, it's not impossible for forms of good to come out of new technology, but your mantra should be, I assume this thing will turn out bad, but I'll be pleasantly surprised if it doesn't. Now, that might sound bleak, but at least it puts you in a more realistic frame of mind and a more authentic moral position, so that the rest of us won't have to be subjected to your crocodile tears in future. In summary, face the nightmare before you buy into the dream. Thanks for your time. 